All right. Um, let's see if we're live yet. Maybe. Maybe not. We are looking to go live for a big retro 99 cent game evaluation contest, guys. And um, what we're looking for here is we're looking to see if any of four games that, looking at the trailers, I believe, have tried to replicate what developer Nicker Vision Studios has come out with back in January of 2016, more than three years ago. Bit Blaster XL launched on Steam. This was Nicker Vision's first game release on Steam, and it is an amazing 99 cent title if you guys haven't played it. Uh, highly recommended. This one is an amazing little gem. It is a game where you're automatically moving, and all you can do is turn. You can set it so you automatically shoot, uh, but you're just trying to stay alive and not crash and pick up all the little power ups and coins and, you know, shoot the asteroids and basically not die. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. The thing I think that sets the, the uh, Nicker Vision games apart. Now, this was Nicker Vision's first game of many that are really, really addictive and fun. But one thing that really sets Nicker Vision Studios games apart from so many others is the really hypnotic, really addicting music that he has. Every one of his games has like just mind, uh, mind-numbing, awesome music. And uh, I really, really love the, the music that he has in his games, but the gameplay, the controls, every one of his games is just phenomenal. I would highly recommend, if you guys have never played a Nicker Vision Studios game, you are getting a fantastic deal and value, especially if you like these old school kind of games, by just going over, look at Bitblaster XL, and look at his bundle. He has seven games right now, I do believe, and you can go and get all seven of his games for like five, five and a half bucks. And uh, yeah, seven games right now for five and a half bucks. Uh, fantastic value at that. In fact, I think Bitblaster XL is well worth the, uh, the five and a half bucks all by itself. I played Bitblaster XL well over four hours, and some of his other games, like uh, Ding Dong. Let me take a look here, guys. Like, I think I have, like, I don't even know. Let's take a look at how much time I have in Ding Dong. Uh, yeah, see, I got over seven hours just in Ding Dong. It's a super fun game as well. But uh, he makes some really fun, really addicting games. And like I said, all of them just have this really hypnotic, really groovy music that I love. But today, guys, we're going to be comparing Bit Blaster XL. Let me pull this down here. We're going to be looking at a brand new game that came out just earlier today called Space... It'd help if I spell it right. Space Smash. Um, like I said, it would help if I spell it right. Space Smash came out just earlier today on March 7th. Another 99 cent title. This one's made by Moria Studio. It's a game I had a lot of fun with recently. Uh, they put, they made a, uh, kind of a, uh, this one here, In-Game Adventures Legend of Monsters. It's a 99 cent title that came out back in 2017. Uh, this is kind of a randomly generated dungeon crawler. And for 99 cents, this game's a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, now, this game here, somebody did say this game is a knockoff of a much more expensive game that might be a lot better. Um, let me see if I can find it. I had a lot of fun with this game. I thought it was well worth the 99 cents. Not for everybody, but uh, this game here, I had a lot of fun with. I think it's well worth the 99 cents. Anyway, Moria Studio just came out with uh, Space Smash earlier today. So this is one of the games we'll be playing today, guys. We'll see if it's as good as Bid Blaster XL. You can kind of see it's almost the same kind of thing where you're moving constantly and you have to try to stay alive. We're also going to be looking at Space Mayhem. Mayhem. All right. And if I can spell it. Another 99 cent title that came out a couple of months ago, back in January. And as you can see here, same kind of thing. Looks like the graphics are a little bit more impressive than what we have in Bitblaster XL. And it's a 99 cent title as well. I've played this a little bit yet. I haven't played it a whole lot. But another pretty impressive little game for 99 cents, if you like these kind of games. We're also going to be uh, looking at... 
retro wing prime. Ooh, this one's a dollar ninety nine game, and this one is a little bit more blocky. This one came out a month before uh, the uh, Space Mayhem. Has four reviews. All four of these reviews, I'm guessing, are going to be positive. Yep, five reviews, all positive. Okay. And as you can see, guys, it's the same type of gameplay. Yeah, look, it almost looks like all four of these games, because all four of these games here came out after Bid Blaster XL. So it almost looks like all four of these games are trying to reap off the success of Bid Blaster XL. Bid Blaster XL has like I think over 5,000 reviews now, and 97% of those reviews are positive. And then the last one, guys, is uh, Space Blaster. Space Space Blaster 8-bit Road. How you doing? <laughs> Thanks so much, dude, for the, uh, uh, wow, 1,500 bits. Dude, thanks so much, man. I appreciate that, my dude. Road, you are the best, dude. Yes, it, it is. Uh, it was my birthday a couple of days ago. So thanks so much, man. I appreciate that, my man. Uh, so Space Blaster XL, guys, looks like almost the same kind of game. Uh, as you can see, all of them have a little bit different look. And as you can see, guys, I already gave this game a negative review. So um, we'll be taking a look at this game, though. We'll be playing it. I'll be reevaluating my negative review. But this game came out back in May of last year. And uh, we'll kind of take a look and see maybe why I gave this game a negative review. So let's go ahead, guys. Let's go ahead and start with that last one that I gave a negative review. Let's make sure that I gave it a negative review uh, for the right reasons. Make sure it wasn't just a bad day for me or whatever. Uh, you, you just earned yourself a new thousand points badge, man. Nice, dude. All right, so here we go, guys. Let's see if this one control has controller support. It doesn't look like it does. Let me check the Steam page. Let's see. Bit Blaster XL. So are you going to bed now, Road, or what's going on, man? Um, no controller support. Okay. This one does have co-op, however, though. Okay, let me also make sure you guys can hear the sounds here because I don't think I have that set up on my OBS. There we go. I'm going to watch uh, for the next 17 minutes and then you're going to bed. All right. All right, let's just go ahead and do normal and start. Oh, I got to pick a ship. Okay, so speed 3, ammo 70, uh, P ammo 2. Speed 2. Let's go faster. I want the faster shit. Alright. Whoa! Okay. So much like Bit Blaster XL, if you hit the border, you do crash. I've played Bit Blaster XL enough to know that you do crash if you hit the border. I also just watched Road play Bit Blaster XL and saw that as well. So this game, you auto are auto-firing just like Bit Blaster XL. Or like you can set it up to. Okay. Very similar. You can see th this developer was really trying to rip off Bit Blaster XL. Um, I mean, it's it it's kind of fun in a way, but one thing I don't like, and I remember this now, guys with this particular game is um, like when you crash there's like no sound effects there's no explosion effect or anything like that also I'm not really he hearing any kind of background music that, that sounds good at all this just this game here is gonna be a really quick review yeah this game here just doesn't um, <laughs> It just doesn't have the same kind of addictive or fun quality about it that makes you want to play it again and again. In fact, after you play a game like Bid Blaster XL, you're just like, what the hell is this? This just feels like a really cheap imitation. So if you guys ever eaten like the Kraft, I don't know, the Kraft single slice cheese or whatever, and then you eat the off-brown cheese, hey, you know, it just tastes like imitation. Same kind of thing here, you know. It just feels in... Like, see right there where I died, there's no explosion, there's no sound. 
it's just a really, really low effort production. And guys, we can get rid of Space, uh, Space Blaster 8-bit. This is just a knockoff. It's a really low effort, uh, you know, trying to knock off the success of BitBlaster XL with all its success on Steam. And it's just nowhere as good as BitBlaster XL. Uh, Space Blaster for a dollar, it's a dollar game, but I'd give it a 1 out of 10. Uh, it's just not a good game, definitely not a, you know, it's a not recommend. Uh, and I believe way back in 2016 when I reviewed Bit, uh, Bit Blaster XL, I believe I gave it a solid 9 out of 10. And I would probably give it even a higher score nowadays because back then in 2016, I graded graphics based on the type of graphics they were, like, as a whole. So, like, I was comparing the graphics to, like, 3D games and Skyrim and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, the graphics aren't that good. Nowadays, when I score a game, I base the, the graphics on games similar to that type of game. So, I say for the type of game that it is, and Bit BitBlaster XL, while it probably got a 2 or a 3 on the graphics before, especially with the kind of music it has now, the graphics for BitBlaster XL would probably be up around an 8. So, I think BitBlaster XL would probably score around a 95 on my scoring system here. Um, Space Blaster 8-bit, let's go ahead and give it my score based on my traditional scoring, guys. If I, uh, if I grade this at 99 cents is what this game, or no, this game I think is $1.99. Uh, I believe this game is $1.99. I'll have to double check. I believe this is the one game that's $1.99. And, uh, it's the one game that's twice as much as every other game and probably the worst of all of them. Uh, the controls aren't near as good or as uh look at the look at the controls look how it's lagging i'm getting 25 frames per second right now um to be fair guys let me go ahead and it does have some power so like that let me go ahead and turn my game capture on here let's see and let's capture this game to see if that gives me some higher fps but it is struggling to run with obs running just capturing my desktop okay so let's go ahead and resume yeah, that's definitely helping my FPS. I'm up to uh, 40 frames per second. But again, no explosion. It just feels it feels empty because it doesn't even give you an explosion or a screen shake or a sound effect or anything when you crash. It's like, ugh. It's like, really? Um, yeah, you just disappear. Exactly, Rode. Like, what the hell is that? And again, guys, even with me capturing game capture, it's just running really, really sluggish. Like, look at this. Like, I don't think that's my computer. And yeah, I mean, guys, value on this game is terrible. Um, even, even though it's a dollar ninety nine, or you're, you know, even if it was ninety nine cents, the, the value here would be really, really bad. Uh, I'll be generous and give it a five out of forty. Uh, the next criteria is how much fun is the game. Just because the game doesn't play well it doesn't run well you have no animations you don't have a good background music uh it's just not nearly as fun guys i would say the fun on this is like a a zero to be honest i don't think this game's fun at all uh so so far we got five points for value zero for fun and then uh controls and bugs uh i would say the the very a game like this should be running at 60 frames per second I mean, I have a game like this with this many asteroids and things on the screen all the time with Rock and Roll. And Rock and Roll has a lot more stuff going on. And that game gives me like over 1,500 frames per second all the time. So there's no excuse for this game running this poorly. Uh, I would say that's a major, major bug. And then, you know, no crash animations. The fact that you just disappear when you die is a bug. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just not good, guys. Uh, I'm going to give this game... I'll be lucky and I'll be generous and give it a, uh, I'll give it a 5 out of 20 for controls and bugs. But then graph the sound because it doesn't have that music in the background. Uh, because it doesn't have explosions. Because it's just all really basic stuff here. Guys, I'm going to give this game a 2. So if you add that all up, 5 for value, 0 for fun, 5 for controls and bugs, and 2 for graphics and sound. Uh, you wind up with a 12%. So essentially a 1 out of 10 uh, is what this game gets. And uh, that's why I've got to not recommend. That's why I've already given this game a not recommend. It's just not good, guys. It's not good at all. So there you go. Space Blaster 8-bit, uh, a 12%. Uh, not even coming close to beating Bit Blaster XL. So if we go Space Mayhem here. All right. 
And this game is a 99 cent game as well, guys. This one came out back in January uh, of this year, as we looked at, inspired by classic arcade games. Yeah, inspired by Good Blaster XL. I've only played this one for 0.2 hours, so I really haven't played this game a whole lot. All right. Come on, OBS. Okay, can I play this one with a controller? That's what I want to know. Yes, I can. Okay. So we have a slow and a boost. We have a slow on the left, uh, L2. R2 is uh, speed up, it looks like. Um, did I ever make a, a video on this on this game, Nimbotus? I see you own it. I don't think so. I don't remember it. Yeah, I don't remember it, man. Whoa. Okay, so I can't use the left stick. I have to use the directional pad. That's interesting. But this game, by comparison to that other game, the game I was just playing, guys, this game runs way smoothly. I'm getting 60 frames per second. Okay, I'm overheating. I think I'm shooting too much. Oh, God. But notice that when I get hit, there's already a lot bigger impact than whatever that Space Blaster XL was or whatever. Um, boop. Oh, I got a mine. Okay. Yeah, this game is way... Okay, there's my mines, okay. So you shoot whatever with whatever power-up you have. You pick up... Okay, so now I picked up a shotgun. Oh, that's cool. So this game's... I mean, for 99 cents, this game's a lot better than Space Blaster... Uh, Space... Whatever it was. I think it was Space Blaster. Okay. Yay! What's this? A roundhouse. Oh wow, that's cool. Boom! Yeah, this game's pretty cool. It's a little bit different than Bit Blaster XL. I mean, it definitely takes off the uh, style. I think they're definitely taking something from Bit Blaster XL, this developer. But it just feel like it's different enough to kind of be its own game. Even though they're definitely stealing a lot of the idea from Bit Blaster XL. What do we got here? A rocket. Ooh. We. Oh, these are. Ho yeah, these. Look at these rockets. They home in on the uh, on the enemy. That's really cool. Oh man, these enemies are. Look at these enemies. They're getting smarter. We. This game's fun, guys. Boom. Boom. Yeah, this game is definitely fun. We got a coin here. Does this game remind you of Bit Blaster XL? Road was just playing Bit Blaster XL in his stream earlier tonight. Oh god. Okay, so those big guys take a couple of hits. Boom, there's one hit. Two hits. Okay. Two hits. Oh wow, it hit me. Game over. Um. Give me a second. Where'd my game go? There we go. So we can come in here, scores near you. I'm 86 on the uh, scoring list. Wow. 4695. Um, I'm, I'm my only friend. Like, I have no friends. Feels bad, man. I have no friends that own the game anyway. So if we go into ships... Um, Okay, it costs kind of like Bit Blaster XL. We have five coins, but we don't have enough to buy another ship. So Bit Blaster XL, I know, is like this. You pick up coins, and then you can buy new ships. Okay. And we can't even see the stats of the new ships until we have enough money. Okay. Well, we're going to have to keep the Falcon, it looks like. Okay, so the bomb is Y. Okay. Yay. So we have a bomb we can use. I guess that's in case you get in trouble. You got a power up. Oh, we got a bomb. Okay, let's try the bomb. Oh, wow, it blew up everything. It gave me some money. I got six coins. Woohoo. Nice. What do we got here? 
Oh, that's cool. You hold down like you hold down the uh, A button and you get that one. That's really cool. I like this game. Oh, I like how that ship's burning as well. So I feel like this game does a few things better than even Bitblaster XL. I don't think it's a better game than Bitblaster XL, but there are some like I like some of these power-ups better than Bitblaster XL. Oops. I ran right into that ship. I have 75 health now. So at least you're not dead, though, like every time you crash or whatever. Buzzing. And this game just came out, what, back in January, I think it was? So this game is a pretty new game as well, guys. Look at this. I like all the different types of attacks that you can do. I got seven more coins. Guys, I can buy another ship. Yeah, if you like these kind of games, I think you're going to like this one as well. Boom, boom, boom. Get some health. Oh, we're back up at 100 now. Nice. This is a good game, guys. Yeah, I didn't think I didn't think any game was even going to come close to Bitblaster XL, to be honest with you. But, uh, like I say, I played this for a few minutes, but I didn't play it long enough to really get a grasp of how good this game is. But this is a good game. I'll have to look and see who the developer is and see if they've made anything else now. Kind of see what they're about. Is this their first title on Steam? Um, whoa, whoa, that was close. Yeah, like in some ways, guys, this game's better than Bitblaster XL. I, I, I think. I haven't played Bitblaster XL in a while, but I'm going to try it here in a second. All right. What's this? Got a mine? Oh, I don't like the mines, man. Let's go ahead and put one. Oh, the, the mines don't exactly go where you set them either. Okay. So those mines should hit that boss man. Yeah. Cool. Takes a little getting used to, for sure. Oh, I like the fire hose, man. This is a cool attack. I love this attack here. Look how the asteroids are, like, burning. Isn't that sweet? That's cool looking. And then they bust apart into different pieces or whatever. Um. Boom. Yeah, I like this one, guys. I really do. I'm going to be giving these games... I want to pick up these coins, because maybe I can buy some more ships or whatever. Oh, I missed that one. I missed that coin. God damn it. I don't have any more bombs. I can't blow these guys up with a bomb. Aw, oh, damn it. I'm low on health. 25 health. Feels bad, man. Okay. Yeah, you can't just hold down your uh, fire button as well. I like that in this game. Like, I know Bit Blaster XL, you can constantly fire. But this game, you cannot just hold down your fire button and just start overheating. Your guns will overheat. Which is pretty cool. I like how the screen shakes and everything like that. So our game's over here. Um... I didn't even beat my high score, though, even though it seems like I lasted longer. But we should have enough money. I only have eight? I thought I got more than that. Huh. Yeah, we still only have eight coins. That's weird. I thought I picked up a couple that were like seven and one was six or something like that. Um, all right, have a good night, Rob. Thanks for coming in, bud. Appreciate it, dude. All right. All right, guys. I think that if I give this game a score... Um, let's go ahead and give this game a score, guys. This game looks like a game with a, a definitely a high replay value for a, only a dollar, guys. If you like these kind of games, I think you're going to play playing this game. Maybe not the first night you buy it, but I think you're definitely going to get more than an hour's worth of time out of this game over the next several months. Uh, I usually like to say how much will you play a game, you know, in the next six months. And I think this game is fun enough and addictive enough to where you'll definitely get way more than an hour. Uh, I think you're definitely getting a huge bang for your buck on this game. Uh, and I really like this one, guys. Value on this one is a no-brainer, 40 out of 40. Uh, how much fun is the game? That's another, you know, that's a really subjective criteria because what's fun to me may not be fun to you. But, uh, you know, I have no problem with the graphics here or anything like that. Uh, I think this game's a hell of a lot of fun, to be honest with you. Um... 
I could sit and play like a game like this for for an hour and a half and have no problems about it. I mean, easy. I could easily spend an hour and a half playing something like this. Um, and that's just in one city. So let me get that coin. Oh god. I like how these kind of bosses here, they kind of charge at you. Try to hit you. Pretty cool. Wah. And this is exact. I mean, what this game here is, is this shows you how much fun and how well a simple 2D game, you know, can be. How, how much fun a simple 2D game can be. Uh, you know, if it's done right. If it has good sound effects. If it has good good uh you know responsive controls and the gameplay is is uh is made to be fun guys i'm gonna give this game here um for fun i think this game's a hell of a lot of fun i'm giving this game a 28 out of 30 on fun i got a laser now uh next criteria guys is controls and bugs i'm not seeing any bugs yet guys the controls seem flawless to me uh, it does have controller support uh, like I say, yeah, I'm not seeing any kind of bugs. I'm seeing no problem with the controls here. Have to give this a 20 out of 20, guys. And, uh, next criteria, I also like the health factor, how you have a chance to, you know, stay alive even if you get hit. And you have the opportunity to fill your health back up if you pick up a health power-up. But, anyway, um, last criteria, guys, is graphics and sound. How good are the graphics and sound for the type of game that it is? I think that the graphics and sound for this game are even better than Bit Blaster XL, as far as the graphics go. Uh, however, Bit Blaster XL, if I do remember right, is probably going to have this game and music. Uh, the sound effects for Bit Blaster XL are just phenomenal. But I would say the, the graphics and sound for this type of game, I'm going to give it a solid 80. So if you add this all up, guys, uh, I said 40 out of 40 for, uh, for value. I said... Uh, for fun, 28 out of 30. I said 20 out of 20 for controls and bugs, and I said for graphics and sound, guys, I'm going to give this game an 8. Uh, for the type of game that it is, I do think it definitely deserves an 8. I like the effects, especially like the fire weapon and stuff like that, how things look like they're burning and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's really well done. You add that all up, guys, this game makes an instant uh, Zaxter's Indie Gold selection. I haven't had a Zaxter's Indie Gold selection for some weeks now, for some time. This game hits a 96% uh, if you add all those scores up, and that's high enough to give it an Azaxter's Indy Gold. So this game here is um, is amazing. I like the fact that you can come in here. Now I can actually come in here and I can buy a new ship. So uh, I do have 11 coins. I can buy that. Oh, I like that you can't see the shields, energy, and health and all that until you actually buy it. Now I have one coin left, and I can kind of compare and say, okay, well, which one do I want? I don't have much as much energy, but I do have a little bit better shields and a little bit more health uh, with this carrier. That's pretty cool. And we don't even know the name of it or anything until you buy it, but we do know it's 20. And I like that. That's a good That's a good effect. Uh, uh, I really like that, guys. So it's a Space Mayhem. Let's go ahead and take a look at the store page for this, guys. Let's take a look here real quick and see what we got. For Space Mayhem, guys, inspired by classic games, it's made by Chronic Vagrant. And if we look at them, they have... This is their only game right now. Do they have any upcoming releases? No. So this is their first game on Steam. And uh, makes an instant Zaxxers Indie Gold selection, especially offering this kind of a game at a great price of only 99 cents. And this game just came out uh, about, what, almost two months ago, about six weeks ago. Uh, Space Mayhem, 96%, guys. Fantastic little game. So is it going to be enough to beat... Uh, is it going to be enough to beat Bit Blaster XL from back in 2016? We'll have to check that out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next game, guys. And that would be a Retro Wing Prime. Oh, Space, Bla Space, Blister X uh, Space Blaster 8-Bit was only 99 cents. Yeah, I still wouldn't give it a higher than a 12%. So Space Blaster 8-Bit got a 12%, even at a 99% score, 99% uh, price, rather. Uh, Space Mayhem got a 96 in comparison at 99 cents. This game here comes in at double the price, $1.99. And uh, Retro Wing Prime. Man, I don't think I've played this at all yet. Yeah, see, I haven't even played this game at all. So what's going on, Barty? 
All right, let's go ahead and jump into this, guys. Retro Wing Prime looks like a very similar type of game. I'm kind of surprised they're actually asking more than a dollar for this one. Let's go ahead and turn the game capture on this one as well. All right, so we have different levels and stuff in this one. Um, can't use a controller? Okay. Nope, no controller on this one. Click and hold to change direction. Um, okay, how do I start? I'm not understanding, man. Oh, I see what's going on. All I have to do is it's going back to the left automatically. But if I if I hold the left mouse button, I turn the opposite way. Okay. So this one's really, really simple. So you automatically turn to the right. I don't know if I like that. That's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Yeah, really weird. The graphics, are, in my opinion, the graphics aren't nearly as well done as, like, uh, the one that I like so much either. Not as good as uh, Bitblaster XL either. And twice the price for this game. I mean, it looks like it's done well enough to have fun. Very, very simple, though. Way simpler than I thought it would be. Okay, so we're filling up our diamond bar up there on the left. Gem suck. Oh, I get to pick one of these now. Um, oh, I got. I probably got to run my ship over which one I want. I'm guessing. Yep. Okay. It's kind of weird. I got some shields, it's cool, but I'm not shooting. Okay. I mean this isn't a bad little game. It looks like it's a it looks like it takes a lot from Bitblaster XL, but this game is so different. The way it controls, the way it works, and everything like that. Uh, yeah, this game really isn't uh, close to Bitblaster XL at all. Play again. We I'm trying to give this game a chance. I, I don't think this is a horrible game. Um, I just don't like it as well as some of the others. I think it's a pretty good game. I think it should be priced at ninety nine cents. I think a dollar ninety nine is a little bit too much for it. But well, I'm also comparing it to the other prices of the other games. The other games are really just offering you a fantastic value as well. So. I mean, if I made this game, I'd probably be asking like a buck ninety nine for it as well. So, I mean, this one is like really, really simple. It's like using that kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. Really get that minimalist uh, approach to the design here. What's this gonna do? I'll give me big shots, okay? So we get some fire up rate, cool. Yeah, I mean you can't judge a book by its cover. This one's actually not bad, guys. This one's pretty fun. I can't lie. I think I like it how you can I think I like the other games, how you can, you know, you have a little more control of which way you're going and stuff over this one over the really simplistic approach of this one. But this one definitely changes it up a little bit.
Yeah, it's not a bad game at all. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and give this game a first impression score here. Um, based on my first impressions of this game, you tried. I kind of like that. $1.99, I think the value is still going to be pretty high here, guys. I think that you're going to be uh, able to get two hours out of this game, especially over the coming months, if you like these kind of games, especially if you like minimalist kind of games. Uh, I mean, it does. this game is a lot like the Bit Blaster XL games that I was just playing. Uh, it just does its kind of own thing, and it keeps everything really simple, as in... You don't shoot, you don't have to worry about shooting, you pick up the power-ups and all you do is you steer, but you don't even control which you know which way you steer. It's like you're just gonna go forward and you're gonna hold left mouse button if you wanna turn left, otherwise you're automatically gonna turn right. So pretty interesting how they've designed this game like that. For $2, guys, I'm gonna give the value pretty high score here. I don't think it's quite as high as the other games. Uh, Space Mayhem, I think, is the one I liked uh, that I gave a 96 to. But I think the value here, guys, I'm going to give this one a 34 out of 40. Uh, at $1.99, I think you're still getting a pretty good value. I don't know if I'm going to end up playing this game for two, over two hours. Uh, so that's why I think it's pretty close to 40. I think I'll probably play at least an hour over the next six months. Uh, but I don't think it's good enough to just, you know, uh, find two hours out of it. Usually to get a really good score for a 40 out of 40, I like to, you know, get at least as many hours out of the game as it costs in dollars. So this one does come in at a higher price of all the other games, at double the price. And uh, I think that this game, I'm gonna give it a 34 out of 40. Uh, next game is fun. Kind of the subjective part of the game. Uh, how much fun is this game out of 30 points? I think this game is right up there as fun as well, guys. I mean, I don't think it's this, I, I don't say, I, I, like, I don't think I like the minimalist controls as much as some of the other games like Space Mayhem and Bit Blaster XL. But in its own little way, with the controls that it has, it's still pretty fun. It's definitely interesting. Uh, I think this game is pretty fun. I'm going to give this game a... Uh, I'm going to give this one a 25 out of 30. Next criteria, guys, is... Uh, um, fun was 25 out of 30 controls and bugs on this one. For what it's trying to do, I don't really see that uh, there's any problem with the controls and bugs. I am going to hit the game for... A few points for not offering the ability to use a controller. You pretty much have to use a mouse. But I could certainly see why somebody would say, hey, it's it's a really simple game. All you need is a left mouse button, and that's all you really need. So um, maybe I can't really take a whole lot of points away for that, guys. Um, seems to work just great. I mean, the, uh, the controls were just a lot easier than I expected them to be. But I think I'm going to have to give this game 20 out of 20 for controls and bugs, guys. I mean, you can't get much simpler, and it seems to control really well. Uh, so, last criteria is graphics and sound. This game is definitely taking a very minimalist approach, but for the type of game that it is, uh, I mean, the explosions look pretty good. Uh, I'm not hearing any kind of background music, however. No, there's, there's no kind of background music. You are getting some enemies here now flying around, which is pretty cool. But uh, for graphics and sound, guys, I'm going to give this game a, uh, I'm going to give it a five. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to take another point away since there's not even any background music in this game at all. Uh, I'm going to give this game a four out of ten. So I think they could have done a little bit better. I know they're trying to take a minimalist approach, but I definitely think they could have made this game look a little bit better. And if they could have given it some good music, I probably would be giving the score like a seven. But without music uh, in the background, I think that, and that really hurts this game. Uh, so a four for my graphics and sound. Yeah, got those two enemies. Uh, so you add that all up, guys. It's still a really good score. You have 34 for um, for value. I said 25 for fun. That is a uh, 59. I said 20 out of 24 controls and bugs is 79. And then I said four for graphics and sound. Ouch is an 83. So uh, still a very impressive score for a $2 game, guys, an 83%. And I think that's a pretty fair score, basically an 8.5 out of 10. 83% is what I'm going to give this game. So I like it. I don't think it's near as good as some of the others, though. Uh, and I think an 83% is probably a very, um, you know, very generous score for this kind of game, or for this particular game. So Retro Wing Prime, I think I would like it better if it was priced at 99 cents. It would definitely get that 40 out of 40 for value. That would bring the score up to almost a 90. 
and then maybe improve the graphics or add some background music or whatever, that would definitely get it above a 90. Uh, but if you added those two things, a couple of really simple things that a developer could do to make uh, make this game a little better value, I think. So we're going to go ahead and say yes, quit. And that leaves the Space Smash game, guys. This is a game that came out today. 99 cents. It is on sale its first week for 49 cents. We're going to go ahead and put this game here in the OBS. Moria Studio, they make a game I really like uh, with uh, first adventure, first game, first adventure, or something like that. Uh, it's a, du a randomized dungeon crawler for 99 cents. It's a really good game. I think it came out a year or two ago. Uh, I played that game for quite a while, and it's a 99 cent game that I really like. Now, this game just did launch earlier today. Uh, and if we come in here, guys, and we play Space Smash, guys, we come in here, look at the options here. Yeah, let's turn that music down a little bit. Okay. If we had video there, okay. Back. Back. Space. Okay, this one does not have controller support, I know that. Okay, so we have to have five coins before we can buy the next ship that's very much like Bit Blaster XL. Uh, so we have to take this one and we're going to go ahead and select it. Okay, this one uses, um, you can't use the mouse to fire as well. I, I don't know that I really like that. Um, oh, we got to collect these things, right? Yeah, I think so. This is a fun little game. It's quite a bit different than uh, quite a bit different than the others, though. It definitely has enough to stand out of its own. Uh, I wish they offered a twin stick shooter for this game. I wish they had this game where a controller would work. In fact, I find it hard to believe that a controller won't work. I like all the different power ups. Let me go ahead and plug in my controller, plug my controller back in, and make sure the controller doesn't work for this game because that would be really cool if it did. Yeah, a controller works in this game. Okay. But the problem is they don't it's not working on the twin stick shooter. Yeah. Um Hang on. Yeah, the, the controller works for movement, but the firing is all messed up, so you pretty much have to use uh, WASD and the arrow keys. That's got to be a power-up. Okay, laser, cool. Come here, come here, power-up. Yeah, this game definitely stands out on its own. This is not a replica. I was expecting this to be like an almost replica of uh, Bit Blaster XL, but it's really not. Oh, I like how that, that kind of froze everything in time. Cool. We. And remember guys, all these scores that I'm giving these games are just a very very much a first impression score. Based on my first few minutes of playing it. They could definitely change over time as I get more familiar with the games and as I play them more and I you know maybe learn that they have uh, more addictive quality than I thought they had, or the controls are better or worse than I thought they were, or you know, bugs or whatever. I can find more bugs. Uh, let's check at the leaderboard. I'm number twenty on the list. I know Road was playing this game for just a few minutes before. Uh, but I don't see him. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Restart. Let's try this game again. Alright. And again, guys, anybody that just tuned in, whoever whoever is here, this game just came out earlier today. This game is a steal at only 59 cents, guys. It's a 99 cent game. They did offer a 40% um, discount its first week, so you can score this game for 59 cents right now on Steam. And this is uh, space. What was it called? Space. 
space, uh, fuck, I already forget the name of it. Not space chase, something like that, though. Space Crash. This game is called Space Crash. Yep, it's on Steam, 59 cents right now, guys, in American currency. We, yeah, if they would, if they would give this game full controller support so you could use twin stick shooters, I think that would be so awesome. Like that would make this game so much better. Yeah, it's a well-made game. There's no doubt about that. I like all these power-ups. Can I... I'm trying to remember... Yeah, you can buy different chips in this game as well, I think. If I remember right, or am I confusing it with another game? I think that's all that you could buy different chips in this game. Oh, you got a magnet. Oh, damn it, I crashed into the side. Feels bad. Um, if we go down to quit, no, we don't have the ability to buy a different ship. Okay, I was thinking of the last game, I think. Oh, we do have it. Yeah, okay, I was going to say. I need five coins. I only got one. All right. How many ships are there? Okay, so we got our starter ship. We got one digital ship there. We don't know how much that one costs. We got four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different ships. Okay. Eight different ships, guys. Points now we get a double points. We got a laser. Awesome. Get some health back. Oh, there's a coin. That's what we need to buy new ships, guys. Those coins. This one has the walls that are moving in as well. That's a really cool idea. Look how the walls are moving in. So how do you make the walls move out again? I don't even know. Yeah, see, there's no walls right now, and the walls actually press in. You can kind of see that up here. Yep. You can see the walls moving in. Okay, so getting those little blue things actually causes the walls to move out, it looks like. We got a magnet now, so we should get those automatically. Yeah, so you definitely want to get those little blue things, because those, uh... Just keep the walls from pressing in. Man, I really like this game, guys. I like this game more than I thought I would. Oh, we got a coin, nice. Oh god. The walls are pressing in, guys. I got 13,070 and the high score is 5 million. What the hell? Wow, that makes me feel like inferior. 
Yeah, I just got a high score of 13,000 and somebody's got fucking 5 million in this game. Yeah, man, I wish that uh, my controller would work for this. It'd be so much better. Definitely the blue thing that uh, helps the screen. I mean, the walls go grow apart. Ouch. Ow. Four coins. Alright, guys, let's go ahead and give this game a score. I like the walls moving in. I think that's a really neat feature. I really like that. Uh, controls would be better if it had a. I think this game definitely needs controller support. And on the website, it doesn't show controller support. My controller only half works. I did try it. But I like those walls moving in. That is really cool. You kind of have to always fight to find the blue things and keep uh, keep eating those blue things to keep the walls from closing in and smashing you. Uh, also, as they move in, they limit your room and your restriction. Uh, they start restricting you more and more on how much room you have to maneuver around. Uh, so really, really uh, nice uh, idea in that game. I, I really got to give the developers props for coming up with that, uh, you know, the walls moving in. I think that's really ingenious for this type of a game. Guys, for 99 cents, I think this game offers a phenomenal value. I have to give this game a 40 out of 40. There's no doubt about it. Uh, for a small price, you're getting a hell of a game uh, for the price, regardless of if the controller doesn't work yet or not. Or not. Uh, next criteria, guys, is how much fun is this game? Uh, guys, I think this game's a lot of fun. I like it. I, I don't think it's quite as much fun because the controls are a little bit more cumbersome than like uh, Space Mayhem that I was playing or Bid Blaster XL. But I like it, guys. I think the fun's right right there. I think it's 27 out of 30. Next criteria for this game is controls and bugs. Uh, what kind of controls are there? What kind of bugs? I'm going to knock this game five points for not having controller support, but I do like it uh, quite a bit. I think if it had controller support, I think that'd be the perfect... Uh, uh, you know, way to play this game because you could move the left stick to move around, right stick to shoot, and uh, that's really all you need. But when I try to play this game with uh, left and right stick, it doesn't work. So I don't like that, so I'm going to give this game a 15 out of 20 there. And then for graphics and sound, I like the music, I like the graphics on this game, guys. Uh, I think that it's really well done for this type of a game. I like the shock effects, I like the walls moving in, everything looks good. Uh, I'm going to give this game... Um, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I don't think it's quite as good as the Space Mayhem. I don't think it's quite as good as Best Bid Blaster XL, especially in the music department. But I'm going to give this one 7 out of 10. You add that all up, guys, you wind up with a 40 for value. I said a 27 for fun. A 67. Uh, you add 15 there for the controls and bugs. Is a 82. And then uh, 80, or 7 for the graphics and sound. You wind up with an 89%. This game, if they just had controller support, guys, this game would also make my Indie Gold selection because that would put it up at a 94. You need a 93% of my scoring to make his access any gold. This one's a really strong game, though, at 89%, especially for a dollar or 59 cents right now on sale, guys. You can't go wrong with this game. Uh, it's a really good game. It's a really, uh, really good uh, new, you know, simple kind of a retro classic game kind of game. Uh, and it, it is different enough to stand out on its own from... Bid Blaster XL. So let's go ahead and quit this game, guys, and get into the last one, which is Bit Blaster XL itself. And let's get into that one, guys. There's a reason this game here has almost 5,000 reviews, and 97% of those reviews are positive reviews. All right. 
Nicker Vision Studios. I think they made it big on this game here. And I've played this game a little bit. This one has full controller support. You do have full options here. You can go and change your music, uh, your sound effects. You can come in here and do your video, whatever resolution you want, full screen off or on. Uh, you can change your controls however you want them to be. You can customize them, whatever you want. Really nice options for a 99 cent game, and that's where this game excels. But nothing is better in this game than both the, uh, you know, really, really responsive, fluid movement that you have in the game, as well as the music. The music is just takes this game over the top, I think. So we're going to go ahead and I don't have enough coins to buy that next ship. Uh, looks like I've already bought a couple of different ships. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and jump in with our second ship here. And this is an auto moving kind of kind of game. Um, on, I'm on auto fire and I just crashed. No, 7,200 points is all I got there. So it feels bad, man. Oops. My game was minimized. All right. I couldn't see, man. Okay, you pick up these green things, you pick up coins, you pick up power-ups, you automatically shoot, you just move left or right. You cannot stop, you're always moving forward. And I mean, the graphics are really, really simple in this game, guys. There's a power-up, I don't remember what it was, I don't know what, I don't know. There's a lot of power-ups in this game, which is kind of nice. I get some flames, I think this is kind of like the uh, Space Mayhem or whatever the game was, where I had the flames. Yeah, flamethrower or whatever. That's some kind of a power-up. <laughs> this one, you do have the ability to dart with the A button as well. Slow down with L2, speed up with R2. I don't think this game had those all these controls when it launched. I think this is stuff the developer has added since it launched, since I played it last, actually, uh, several years ago. I think the developer came in and, and gave you the ability to speed up and slow down and stuff like that to add a little bit more dynamics to the game. And uh, I think it's a nice touch. Beautiful game, guys. Even though it may not look like a beautiful game, this game is a joy to play. We're going to go ahead and grade this game, guys. I've played this game quite a bit already since it just came out. But I, like I said, I do think the developer has added more. I think he's added more in the controls uh, mechanism. I think you have the ability to slow down and speed up now like that or like that. And I think it's a great touch for a game like this. Um, there's a coin we can help us buy a new ship. But Bit Blaster XL, guys, is probably going to remain the king. I know we gave Space Mayhem a 96 earlier. But guys, if we grade this game here, I mean, this game came out before any of the ones, any of the other games we played before. This game came out way back in January of 2016. And this is the game that made Nicker Vision big as a big, you know, smaller indie developer on Steam. Uh, this is the game that definitely made him a successful indie developer. Uh, when you have 5,000 reviews on a game, you've made some money on it and you are very successful um, with an, you know, especially with a 99 cent game like this. So, guys, graphics and sound, I mean, not graphics and sound, value on this game, guys. There's no doubt this game is a 40. Uh, 40 out of 40 at 99 cents, you're just getting one hell of a game here. This is one of the type of game that may not look like it's fun to play, but once you start playing, it just definitely has that addictive quality that will have you playing again and again and again and again. Um, it's just super, super addictive. Uh, the controls are just so responsive in this game. Uh, pretty much like all the Nicker Visions games. I mean, Ding Dong, and that's probably one of my favorites as well as Ding Dong. But I'm not even sure Ding Dong is as good a game as this one here. Like, this one is just an amazing game. Uh, 99 cents, through the roof value, guys. 40 out of 40. Next criteria is how much fun is this game. Uh, it's worth 30 points, guys. Kind of the subjective part of my scoring. What's fun to me may not be fun to you. Uh, you know, if you don't like these kind of games, you're probably not gonna, you're probably gonna like shake your head at my score here. But guys, I mean, this game's getting another 28 from me. 28 out of, out of 30, I think this game is right up there. Really high, uh, and it's part of the addictive quality that makes this game that addictive. Also part of it is that music, that hypnotic music is gonna have you wanting to play the game over and over again as well. Uh, music is huge in this game. It is such, such a hypnotic, such groovy, uh, music that you're just going to, you're just going to listen to this music for an hour 
and uh, not be tired of it. It's amazing. And if you don't like it for some reason, I mean, you can always go to the controls or the options and turn the music off if for some reason it starts to annoy you or whatever. So that's a nice touch as well. But uh, I said 28 for um, for fun, guys. And I said for controls and bugs, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the controls or the bugs. The controls are super responsive. Uh, I haven't seen any bugs in this game at all. Uh, 20 out of 20, and I feel like I'm almost stealing points from the developer because the game is that good and that responsive. And, and, uh, it almost feels like giving him a perfect score here. It is cheating him out of points that he, that he deserves just because it's that good. Next criteria, guys, is graphics and sound. Uh, this is a score that I kind of cheated the developer on back in 2016 when I first scored this game because I think I gave him like a 3 out of 10. Because, I mean, when you compare this game to, you know, 3D games and modern games like Skyrim or whatever, it just doesn't match up. But that wasn't fair. And since uh, I reviewed this game back in January 2016, I started scoring these indie games differently. I started scoring 2D games in, in games like this compared to other games of a similar style. You know, I compare this game to the games like My Own Rock and Roll and other games like the games, the other games we just played here tonight in this live stream. And, uh... This game here is, uh, you know, when you compare it to other games like it, it does really well, especially when you look at how responsive and everything, how smooth everything's moving. And then when you listen to that, that hypnotic music, I mean, that gets you as well. Guys, graphics and sound for this type of game would be an 8, but this game has such amazing music, guys. The music is something that just is phenomenal for this type of a game. I really, really, really love the music for this game, guys. 9 out of 10 for graphics and sound. It's helped out by an amazing soundtrack and uh, music score. So if you add that all up, guys, 40 out of 40 for value, 28 for fun, 20 out of 20 for controls and bugs, and 9 out of 10 for graphics and sound, you wind up with a 97%. So, um... Really good game, guys. This game is a game that I got a 90 from me way back in 2016 when I first scored it. But now that I'm a little bit more lenient on the graphics, uh, because I base the game on the type of game that it is, rather than comparing this game to, you know, 3D games like Dead by Daylight or Skyrim or whatever, uh, it's not fair to grade a game like this versus, you know, more sophisticated 3D games or whatever. So, um, and the music, I mean, you got to love this music. 97% uh, guys. This game uh, is an amazing game, and I'm going to go back and, and I'm going to give this game a, uh, you know, this is going to be, well, this game isn't really a hidden discovery. I, I started a new series called Zaxxer's Hidden Hidden Discovered Gems or something like that, but I, it's not something new to me. I've already knew about this game. In fact, I played this game when it first came out, I think, uh, back in 2016. So I've known about it. But my rescore of Bid Blaster XL puts it all the way up at a 97%. For 99 cents, guys, it's a phenomenal deal. And uh, a must-buy must recommendation for sure. So Nickervision, Bid Blaster XL, hangs on barely to, um, to win the contest. But Bid Blaster XL wins the contest at 97%. Uh, the next one is, uh, it was Space Mayhem, I believe, that came in at a 96%. Space Blaster got a 12%, horrible. Uh, Retro Wing Prime, I think that one was the one that got an 83. And Space Smash uh, got an 89. So, there you go, guys. There's your scoring. Bit Blaster XL got a uh, um, 97. Space Mayhem was the one that got a 96. Space Smash got an 89. Retro Wing got an 83. And this one got a 12. So all of them did really well, except for Space Blaster's 8-bit. Um, all of them scored 80 or above. So there you go, guys. There's my scoring for my games. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next stream or video. Definitely check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already checked that out, guys. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. See you in the next video. Peace.